Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss about important questions related to centrifugal pump. Like, what are the components of a centrifugal pump? How does the centrifugal pump work? What are the advantages and disadvantages of centrifugal pump? So the centrifugal pump is the pump which most widely used in the chemical and petroleum industries for transferring all types of liquids like raw materials, materials in manufacture and finished products as well as it is used for general services like water supply, boiler feed, condenser circulation, condensate return. In this pump, energy or head is imparted to a flowing liquid by centrifugal action. Centrifugal pumps may be constructed from a very wide range of corrosion resistant materials. The whole pump casing may be constructed from plastics such as polypropylene. Or it may be fitted with a corrosion resistant lining. As a centrifugal pump operates at high speed, hence it may be directly coupled to an electric motor and it will give a high flow rate for its size. Now let's see the components of the centrifugal pump. So a centrifugal pump has two main components. First one is a rotating component, which are an impeller and a shaft. And the stationary components, which are casing, suction and discharge nozzle, seal chamber and stuffing box, and bearing housing. Now let's see these components one by one. So first stationary components is Casing It is an airtight chamber in which the impeller rotates. It is provided with a suction nozzle for the inlet and a discharge nozzle for the outlet for the liquid to be pumped. The function of the casing is to convert the kinetic energy which is imparted to the liquid by the impeller into useful pressure energy. The casings can be designed either as solid casings or split casings. In solid casing entire casing including the discharge nozzle is all contained in one casting or fabricated piece. And in a split casing two or more parts are fastened together. When the casing parts are divided by a horizontal plane the casing is described as horizontally split or axially split casing. When the split is in a vertical plane perpendicular to the rotation axis the casing is described as vertically split or radially split casing. Casing where rings act as the seal between the casing and the impeller. There are three general types of casings. Circular casing, volute casing and diffuser casing. The simplest form is the circular casing, which consists of an annular chamber around the impeller. And no attempt is made to overcome the losses that will arise from eddies and shock. When the liquid leaves the impeller at relatively high velocities which enter this chamber. Circular casings are used for low head and high capacity. Such casings are seldom used. Then the second casing is. Volute casings. It builds a higher head. A volute is a curved funnel increasing in area to the discharge port. As the area of the cross section increases. The volute reduces the speed of the liquid and increases the pressure of the liquid. One of the main purposes of a volute casing is to help balance the hydraulic pressure on the shaft of the pump. So in a volute type casing, the liquid is discharged by the impeller into the volume chamber of gradually increasing cross-sectional area towards the outlet. Hence the fluid velocity decreases gradually thereby increasing fluid pressure. Hence the volute converts the kinetic energy of the liquid which is imparted by the impeller into pressure energy. In this design, a considerable loss of energy takes place due to the formation of eddies. The third type of casing is used in diffuser type or turbine pumps. In this type, guide vanes or diffusers are interposed between the chamber and the impeller. The impeller is surrounded by a series of guide vanes mounted on a ring called a diffuser ring. The conversion of kinetic energy into pressure energy is more efficient with this type compared to the volute type. There is a gradual change in the direction of fluid so that the losses are kept minimum. Improved efficiency is obtained over a wider range of capacities. This construction is often used in multi-stage high head pumps. Then the next stationary part is 
suction and discharge nozzle the suction and discharge nozzles are part of the casing itself from suction nozzles the liquid is entered and from discharge nozzles liquid leave the next component of a centrifugal pump is seal chamber and stuffing box the seal chamber and stuffing box both refer to the casing either integral with or separate from the pump case housing it is located in the region between the shaft and casing where sealing media are installed when the sealing is achieved by means of a mechanical seal the chamber is commonly referred to as a seal chamber when the sealing is achieved by means of packing the chamber is referred to as a stuffing box both the seal chamber and the stuffing box have the primary function of protecting the pump against leakage at the point where the shaft passes out through the pump pressure casing when the pressure at the bottom of the chamber is below atmospheric pressure it prevents air leakage into the pump when the pressure is above atmospheric pressure the chambers prevent liquid leakage out of the pump the seal chambers and stuffing boxes are also provided with cooling or heating arrangement for proper temperature control then the next component is bearing housing the bearing housing encloses the bearings mounted on the shaft the bearings keep the shaft or rotor in correct alignment with the stationary parts under the action of radial and transverse loads the bearing house also includes an oil reservoir for lubrication a constant level oiler and jacket for cooling by circulating cooling water now let's see the rotating components of the centrifugal pump so the first rotating component is impeller the impeller is the main rotating part that provides centrifugal acceleration to the fluid the impeller consists of a number of blades either open or shrouded which are mounted on a shaft that projects outside the casing its axis of rotation may be either horizontal or vertical closed type or shrouded impellers are generally the most efficient the number of impellers determines the number of stages of the pump a single stage pump has one impeller only and is best for low head service a two stage pump has two impellers in series for medium head service and a multi stage pump has three or more impellers in series for high head service then open or semi open type impellers are used for viscous liquids or for liquids containing solid materials and on many small pumps for general service then impellers may be of the single suction or the double suction type if the liquid enters from one side then it is called a single suction type and if liquid enters from both sides then it is called double suction type then the next rotating component is shaft the basic purpose of the shaft is to transmit the torques when the pump is started and during operation while supporting the impeller and other rotating parts so that's all about the component of the centrifugal pump these are the basic component of the pump In the next video we will see working of centrifugal pump advantages and disadvantages of centrifugal pump and the link of these videos is given in the description box If you like my video please like share and subscribe to my YouTube channel which is Chemical Edda